If you are looking to get insights from multiple different papers, you have PDFs and you want to use AI to quickly glean insights from them, I'm going to show you today how to do it for free using SciSpace. So this is SciSpace. And what we can do is once you sign in, you do need to create an account. Once you sign in, you can go to my library and that's where you can upload any of your own papers and use it there. Now, what I'm going to do today is I am going to upload PDFs and what I'm going to go ahead and do is create a new folder. And in this folder, I'm going to do, this is my steroids and ion mobility. And I'm just going to bracket this with tutorial uh, so that I know later what I actually use this folder for. And then I'm going to click create here. So now I have all of these folders in here and I can click in here and now I can upload PDFs. So I just added in a whole folder of PDFs. If you're someone like me, I love having the PDFs in like my Zotero and other things. So I usually just create a folder of like a search and then I can add it in here. So I'm going to upload all seven files. And now what's nice is with these files already here, I can actually create those same columns that I would create from the slide spaces, um, just general AI search. So I can create a summarized abstract or I can create the TLDR quickly from the PDFs. I don't have to go, oh, they don't have the PDFs available. And these are typically gonna be a little bit more accurate because not all of the um, results from, from the AI search is going to have the PDF available to have all of the information it needs to be able to do things like this. What I wanna focus on is how you can actually use all of these papers and generate insights from it. So what we can do is up here, you can see it says get insights for questions or ask questions up here. And so we're gonna do this, but what we can do is in all folders, we can click down and we're gonna click off select all and only select the one that we just created that has all of these papers in it. And then I can ask it a question. So I can say, can you list all the ways, all the methods that have been used to separate steroid isomers using ion mobility spectrometry. So now you can see we get the insights from the top uh, five papers here like we would typically do with any search. Um, you can see all of our papers kind of exist down here and we do get those different columns available to us. We can see we have um, IMS has been used to separate steroid isomers using various methods. <clears throat> One of the approaches uses different drift gases. This is going to be a review and then this is going to be a specific research paper. Another method is the formation of multimers which involves group 1 metal adduction. That's very accurate. Um, the one thing I would like here is that when you upload this, that it would pull in the metadata to be able to um, like allow you to see the titles here instead of it being the titles of the the title that you gave that paper. Um, that's one thing that I would like to see happen, like how Zotero does or any other uh, reference manager does. Derivatization of steroids has also been employed to improve separations, such as this one. This is the Ahonen paper, or this is saying Ray et al. That should be, that should definitely be the Ahonen paper. Yeah, this, that's a, that's a miscue there. Um, so overall, I think this is somewhat good. I think this is incorrectly citing, um, where like some of these do not belong to the papers that it's saying it belongs to. Um, so that is interesting. I'm, I'm curious about what is going on there. You can also go into Ask Copilot or drop down here to ask more questions. So I'm just asking it, what are the major results of these research articles? So you can see that now there are citations that are existing within the answers as well. They're actually pointing you to the different papers that it is sending you to. So you can see here, it says the authors compared CCS values obtained in their study with those published by a different paper. Found that there were differences highlighting the complexity of CCS calibration and eye mobility spectrometry. So if I click on this, it is taking me to this to this specific paper, but it's not taking me to the specific section. So if I hover over this, it's showing that where it's pulling that information from, it looks like might be the conclusion. And so if we scroll down to the conclusion, 
you can see here it's talking about those CCS values. Now it probably did talk about that in the results as well, but it is kind of showing you where it's pulling this information from. Let's see if we hover over this. So this is showing you in the results and discussion section. It talks about this information here. So overall, I think this is doing a better job at more accurately identifying which citation the information belongs to. And so I would probably use this kind of co-pilot instead of using um, this general ask up here for right now to get more specific information. But now you have a way to basically upload a series of papers and be able to analyze it and ask different information use. You can even ask like for each article, what was the instrument the study was performed? on. So like getting really specific if you're dividing like a lit review by the type of instrument used. So you can see here there was there is like a mistake going on. So um, basically it's it's basically just using question marks here and it's only pulling up the water synap G2S. This one's getting confused probably because it's this review here and so it's not sure which it's using. Um, again, all these other ones are water synap G2S, which I know is not what was used here. So there might be some um, difficulties going on here with being able to do this. But when you're looking at really high level, again, I'm asking very specific questions instead of really high level questions. So if I said from these articles, what would be the next steps in the field. This gives you a few different next steps. This is again kind of doing it article by article and giving you the future works of that article. But if you're trying to build like a new study, doing something like this and seeing what are all the different things really quickly can be really helpful, especially if you know the articles going into it. So again, this is probably going to be a little bit better of a system when you already know the research articles versus when you're looking for the research articles. Because if I did a search of this and looked for all these same things, so even here I could add in the columns method used, and I'm getting these methods where a lot of times when I would do this in just their general, um, where I would do the same methods used in their general search, they wouldn't be able to give me the methods used or they wouldn't be as accurate. So this is a way where you can upload a lot of papers, be able to get information from it quickly for a literature review or for a research article if you're writing one of those, or just to build out your field. And if you are interested in diving into what is your next research project going to be, I would definitely check out my 30 day research jumpstart guide. I will leave that link in the description below. It just helps you walk you through how to learn your field, how to develop research ideas, what papers should you read, all of those things that you need in order to be able to develop your research project and move forward. If you're interested in more tutorials on SciSpace, I will leave a few up here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.